Are you a someone who still has the dream of something you'd like to become? How old is that t-shirt? Are you a bit worried the moment has passed that it's really too late? You just can't be asked. When you look back at the end of your life, when you wish that you tried a bit more, there are lots of examples of people who made it. As late in life as 64. I bought it in 2003. If you're a dad in his 40s, 50s or 60s or older, who ever needed evidence that this is the case, then that absolutely happened at the Paris Olympics. Annie McDonald, who turned 51 at the Paris Olympics, became the oldest person to ever compete at skateboarding. He was competing with people who were the same age as his children. Which just goes to show that if you have the work ethic and the discipline and the patience to stay in the game long enough, you can achieve your goals, irrespective of how ambitious those goals are. My wife and I laugh about how competitive we are. I laugh more. For context, it's important to remember that he did start this journey nearly 40 years ago. If I was to start skateboarding now, age 48, it might potentially be overly ambitious for me to think I could compete at the next Olympics, but who knows? My wife told me I had to stop acting like a flamingo. I had to put my foot down. Reason number one, life experience. Never underestimate how valuable life experience is. If you're in your 40s or 50s, that's 40 or 50 years of life experience of overcoming ups and downs, managing good and bad times, managing yourself, being versatile. That's 40 or 50 years of dealing with other people, dealing with difficult people, dealing with difficult situations. And all the situations and experiences you've gone through are basically teaching you valuable skills. The saying education is wasted on the young, I think is actually pretty accurate. I certainly know that when I've gone back to learn things, I started in my 30s, I appreciated them a bit more. I'm much more keen to learn jujitsu methodically, doing as I'm told in my 40s, because I can see the benefit of doing things slowly and methodically. That may be something that would have been completely lost on me in my 20s. In my 20s, I imagine I'd be much more excited about learning the latest flying baron bowler armbar whatever. If you're still physically capable of doing the thing you want to do, then actually there's a strong argument that starting a business in your 40s or 50s or pursuing a goal in your 40s or 50s means it's much more likely that you'll succeed because you've had all that time to nurture a work ethic, learn what works and doesn't work, have a better understanding of yourself, which in turn means you're more likely to succeed. To the person who stole my copy of Microsoft Office, I will find you. You have my word. Reason number two. If you're in your 40s, 50s or 60s and looking to embark on a new challenge or pursue a new dream, well, you're obviously someone that embraces change, which is a really positive thing. I think along with patience and discipline, one of the key factors to being successful is the ability to be versatile, the ability to embrace change. Life has a great way of chucking a spanner in the works the minute you start to do something. The weather's crap. Your wife needs the car. Something comes up at work. If you're a dad in his 30s, 40s or 50s, then by default, you have become someone who is good at being versatile, is good at learning how to deal with problems. The skills that you develop of being a parent are the set of skills you need to succeed in any other area of your life. Children by their nature are unpredictable which means you in turn have to be versatile. Children take a lot of work, which means you in turn have to have a very strong work ethic. The sheer fact that something about this video, this podcast episode appeal to you means that you are someone who likes change, embraces change, and change is an inevitable part of life. Nothing stays the same forever. And instead of being scared of it, if you can train yourself to be someone that embraces it, your life's probably gonna feel a lot smoother. Tip number three, this time is yours. And by that I mean, naturally, the older you get, the more valuable time seems as a resource to you. I'm a lot more aware now at 48 of every passing year than I was at 28. At 28, I didn't even think about my years ahead. Whereas at 48, it's something I'm aware of. And the one way to make something more valuable is to have the idea of its scarcity. And the older you get, you get to the point where you think, well, there's more behind me than there is in front. That might give you the drive to say, well, it's now or never. If I'm ever gonna do this dream, I'm ever gonna go for this, I have to do it now. Because every year that I put it off is another year less of time I've got to make it work. 
Tip number four, maturity. The saying, you can't put a young head on old shoulders, or is it a young shoulders on an old head? I don't know. I don't know if that works. I think you know what I mean. I think human beings start out as a bit of a blank canvas, a lump of clay. And over time, the things we go through, the ups and downs, the good times, the bad times, mold us. They smooth the edges. They mold us into the person we're supposed to be. And it's only through that process that you can see maybe what you're supposed to be in life, what your purpose is. Which is why it doesn't really surprise me that sometimes it takes you a 40s, 50s or 60s before you go, oh, I kind of understand why I had to go through all those things so that I can do this for maybe the last 20 or 30 years of my life. Unfortunately, it's not until you've gone through the situation that you realize why you had to go through that situation in the first place. Me having battled with my own mental health for 20 or 30 years gives me a pretty accurate insight to anyone else who may be going through something similar. You're going to know much more about a situation experience if you've lived it than if you read a book about it. And if you watched Andy McDonald, the 51-year-old I was talking about earlier that just competed at the Olympics, he was just happy to be there. He was just skating in pure joy of the experience of skating. At 51, as a father, as a man who'd probably gone through lots of ups and downs in his life, you could see that he was just having a blast getting to be a 51-year-old skateboarding at the Olympics. Now, I don't know this, but I imagine that was probably more important or have more value to him than the idea that he might get a medal. Yes, him winning a gold medal at the Olympics would have tied a nice pink bow around the whole experience. But actually, I think what's much more important is just his sheer presence of competing Olympics age 51 will no doubt inspire lots of men who are later in their life to think, do you know what? I can totally pick this back up. I can do this. At the end of the day, that's really what life's about. It's about connection. Was the world a slightly better place because you were in it? And reason number five, why it's never too late to pursue your dreams, personal fulfillment. I've said it before, but never underestimate how your actions, how your behavior might be inspiring other people around you. I'm pretty sure that when I look back on my life in my last few days, there will be a number of things that I'm really proud of. And I imagine these are things that really pushed me out of my comfort zone. Like in Andy McDonald's case, competing at the Olympics age 51. So for me, writing a book or trying to develop a podcast and a YouTube channel, age 48, training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, all things that are quite difficult and are probably best described as the road less traveled. Those are the things that will give me personal fulfillment, the difficult stuff, stuff that's not easy, like pursuing your dreams. Even if it ends up not looking exactly like you hope it will look, well, I'm sure be the things that you will look back and think, I had a good life. I did my best. I gave it my best shot. My favorite Disney film is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I love a hero with a twisted backstory. And reason number six, why it's never too late to pursue your dreams, making a difference. Andy McDonald competing at the Olympics age 51 basically inspired me to do this video. I've done several episodes in the past about people who didn't make it to later stages in their life. And Andy McDonald has inspired me to do it again because I think we need constant reminding, especially in your 30s, 40s or older. Because I think there's a danger when you're in your 30s, 40s or 50s that life can feel a bit Groundhog Day, that you can just feel like, well, I'm on this path. Nothing really is going to change. Nothing's really going to be that different. And I totally disagree with that. You have the power and the ability to make your life as exciting as you want it to be. You just have to start. And it's a bit of a vicious circle, because I imagine all the reasons that people don't start these things in their 40s or 50s is because they know all the potential reasons that it might not work. It might fail. If you can push that all aside and just say, stuff it, I'm going to do it anyway. Who knows where that might end up? You don't know. I don't know where this might end up. I may never have a successful podcast or YouTube channel. My book may never really sell any copies, but that may not be the point. The experience of doing so might be altering my trajectory ever so slightly that I end up somewhere else that I never would have ended up if I hadn't done all these experiences first. In the same way that sometimes I feel like if you don't feel like you have the courage to do it for yourself, do it for your children or do it for those around you. You don't know that your actions may be really inspiring someone in your social circle. You may not have actually voiced that to try and do something that they're worried about. It's making a difference. Unfortunately, people don't always tell you 
when it's making a difference, which is why these situations can feel quite lonely. When someone leaves a comment on a video saying, I really enjoyed that, or it really made me laugh, or I really like what you're trying to do, it makes a massive difference because that person is a stranger, has no reason, has no agenda to lie. And this segues beautifully on to the last point, reason number seven, why it's never too late to chase your dreams, because you need to be that role model for your children. One of the most important things I think as a dad, and the thing I hope, I generally hope that I become come in the future is that voice in their heads when times are difficult where they go dad would do this anyway dad would put the work in dad would believe it's possible dad would be positive the way we behave now is setting the standards you putting in the work when it's difficult and your children watching that is setting the standard. I still aspire to be like my dad. I'm 48 and there are still moments where I think, what would my dad have done in this situation? What would he have said in this situation? He was a man that I loved and admired who lived a really good life. But he lived a really good life because he was fair and he was kind and he worked hard and he had discipline. And the legacy that he's given me, especially when times are difficult, is that I want to live a life that he'd be proud of. So you starting that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu class or starting that business or starting that book or starting that podcast, is showing your kids it's totally possible. Exciting things can happen at any stage of your life. You've just got to do it. You just have to have the courage to start. Sometimes I find it much easier to think, actually, I'm doing this because my kids need me to do this, as opposed to I'm doing it for myself. I really hope you got some in this podcast. And if something I said in it really resonated, please let me know in the comments. Trying to develop a podcast or a YouTube channel could be quite lonely. And I really appreciate it when people say hello. I also do a daily live stream on my YouTube channel if you actually want to come and say hello in the comment section. I'm really trying to develop this community to be a place that supports parents, specifically dads, and I suppose specifically dads like myself who often struggle with their mental health. With that in mind, I've created an online stress management course for parents. That's a bit tongue-in-cheek. In exchange for your support of joining my mailing list at www.dadmindmatters.com, you can have access to this course completely free. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care.